A question to both Damien and Elisa. You know, given the shift to a more virtual society, I mean, there will be some aspects of uh, how we live and work virtually that will carry on post pandemic. How can we create a safer online environment and social network to support young people? And are there any inherent risks with this kind of shift? Maybe start with you, Damien. Uh, sounds good. Uh, uh, you know, of, of course, there are inherent risks as we we're all seeing and we're very much uh, aware of whether that's, you know, misinformation, uh, disregard for privacy or just bullying. Uh, but there are also missed opportunities. There, there are missed opportunities around being able to detect when somebody is suffering as they're posting online and, and being able to, you know, mobilize services to support them. I, I think there are two things, you know, we are looking at and, and could be doing. Uh, one is around, you know, do work with, with sort of tech companies to, to create the safer uh, spaces online to create greater safeguards online, especially for youth seeking mental health. And secondly, you know, I think peer to peer networks, social networks will be very powerful in, in helping youth. You know, imagine having a, a peer with a lived experience with some clinical guidance, helping you, helping uh, to helping you navigate through the services and through the experiences you're having. But there's one principle around this that we, we strongly believe in is that all of this has to be co-designed with youth. Like, so there's, if you don't do it, might as well forget it right away. So the, the one principle around all of this work is co-design with youth, uh, and that has to be strictly mm -hmm. abided, abided by. Yeah, excellent. Elisa, anything to add? Yeah, you know, I'm so glad you mentioned the co-design, um, Damien, because that to, uh, is also a huge principle of our work at Kids Help Phone. And we actually um, right now have 260 young people that have been co-designing the last few months a national peer support service that we will be launching um, in the next few weeks. Uh, and it's been an incredible experience to really have that conversation with young people about how do you connect with other young people? How do you become an expert in your story and potentially supporting other young people? And then how do you think young people wanna be able to talk about the challenges that they're facing? And so um, having this group of young people has been an extraordinary experience. Um, we've hired youth moderators um, and really allowing them to build the service that's gonna make the most sense to them. The other thing that I think is really important is as we're building new support systems, that's fantastic. We also have to think about the fact that young people are spending large percentages of their days on social media platforms. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of the work that we've been doing at Kids Help Phone is how do we integrate our supports into the places that young people are already spending their time instead of saying, well, yeah, we know that you really want to spend your time on TikTok or whatever the platform is, Instagram, but if you want support, leave that platform and come to us. And so last year we launched an integration with Facebook Messenger, and we did that specifically because we heard from Indigenous youth that that was the main way that they connected with each other. And so we said, well, if that's how young people want to connect with each other, then let's provide a connection to our service through Facebook Messenger. And we're looking at a lot of those integrations, again, to say your mental health support doesn't have to happen outside of the normal channels where you connect with each other. We can bring that support directly to you. And I think that that's really the future. Well, that's very interesting. I mean, both co-designing and what I heard was meet them where they are. Yeah. And, and that's that's the only way that you're actually going to, you know, make that connection in, in, in that right channel. So maybe one last uh, closing question along the same themes. I mean, there's obviously so many innovative tools out there and for young people having to navigate. Um, how, how does someone even know what's the right tool for them? And any, you know, maybe a quick response from each one of you, any advice for, for people listening today as far as what would the right tool, be? you know, how do you know what the right tool is? Maybe Iman, start with you. Sure. I think there's no real way to know the right tool. I think a lot of it is just trial and error and um, having a supportive network around you. Um, we often talk at jack.org about how valuable peer support is. And while it's not everything, it is huge. So um, while we navigate this 
really complicated world of services, I think it's extremely important that youth have trusted people around them while they find the right resource because it's not an easy like checkbox to pick. Yeah, for sure. Damien? I completely agree, with Iman. Uh, I think that's the you know how do we how do we you know how do we go through all these tools available online? Lots of without any clinical evidence whatsoever, mm -hmm. and even the ones with clinical evidence having very little of that. So I think that that's that's you know a lot of comp you know we have certainly provided guidance around which tools to use and so on. But I think with, where the future is going is really matching youth and 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 adults or anybody else to specific digital services. So you do get the services you, you, you know, you, you get assessed in some either active way through assessments or in, in a more passive way, by just with permission, looking at some of your experiences online and then really designing a service that's personalized to you, providing you the digital supports that are coming from a trusted source. I think yeah. that will always be the case where, where a trusted source has to be there. Yeah, thank you. And any closing comments, Elisa? Yeah, I would say at the end of the day, it's on us to create a system that does not make young people or families run around trying to find the right tool, that we should not try to duplicate the, the on the ground mental health services where you don't know which one you should go to or which one has the hours that would work for you. We actually need to be building integrated systems of digital mental health supports. So we just launched a few weeks ago, our very first chat bot on our website. And the idea behind that is to have a conversation with a bot that can help you get mm. to exactly the tool or the article or the service that's going to be most meaningful for you. Um, we've helped to build the Wellness Together portal, uh, which is the federal government's COVID mental health response. And it is using measurement-based care for you to say, I tried this, it didn't work, maybe I should try that. Because the idea is not to offer you a buffet Here's 500 services, try it out and let us know, you know, did that one work? If not, there's 499 others. That is not helpful. And it is our job to figure out how do we hold your hand and go, maybe try that. Oh, it didn't work, no problem. Here's another thing that might work for you based on what you're dealing with, what you said is most helpful to you. And that's our, I would say our challenge. And we have to rise to that challenge or we're gonna be letting every person across Canada down. Yeah, no, gr a great feedback from all of you. I mean, really helping people navigate the system and try to get them to the place uh, where they'll receive the help that they need based on their unique circumstances. So just uh, thank you for that. A sincere thank you to all three of you for joining us uh, today. The work that you're doing with your respective organizations, Eman with jackdoc.org, Damien, CAMH, and Elisa with Kids Helpline, Honestly, like I, I can't even imagine the volumes that you've had to deal with over the course of the year during a pandemic and the impact that you're having with so many young people is just phenomenal. Uh, you know, RBC is very proud to partner with all three of your organizations. So again, thank you for being here and thank you for the work that you, that you do and the impact that you're having. Mm -hmm.